Hi guys, how's it going? So today I want to talk about fertilizing in fall. There seems to be quite a number of questions about what to fertilize, what to use, and whether or not it's even necessary this time of year. So I thought I would try to help eliminate a little bit of the confusion around that subject. I did want to mention a couple of things before I jump into it. First of all, this is all coming from my own perspective of fertilizing, my own experience, my own schedule that I have my garden on. I live in a zone five high desert. And I feel like though that this is a good general guideline for any of you who live where there is a winter where your plants go dormant there's no leaves there's snow on the ground perhaps or ice i don't know how this relates exactly to a tropical growing climate because i don't live in one i don't garden in one and the plants are a lot different. So in that case, I would recommend you ask somebody at your local garden center what you should be fertilizing and when. I think that's the best route. And second of all, I have the most experience with Espoma products. Um, you guys know this, those of you who watch our videos, I use it all the time. I've used it since I started gardening in my own garden, which has been 13 years ago. And then my parents have been selling it down at the garden center and using it in their own garden for as long as I can remember. So what I wanna do is break this down into seven different groups of plants. And we'll go ahead and put the time signatures along with the title of each group on the screen. So if you wanna skip forward, you can do that. But um, real quick, the groups are evergreen trees and shrubs, deciduous trees and shrubs, roses, perennials, bulbs, annuals, and grass. The first group is evergreen trees and shrubs. And this is anything with a needle leaf or a broad leaf. So spruces, pines, boxwood, hollies, yews, anything like that, you typically don't wanna fertilize after about July the 1st because you don't wanna have them push a whole bunch of extra brand new foliar growth that doesn't have enough time to harden off and be prepared for winter. You can, however, come in late in the season, like late October, and you can do a half strength fertilizer at that point because there's not enough heat for plants to be putting on growth, but the roots are still alive underneath the soil. So if you put a little bit of food there, they can still utilize that. Now, doesn't mean that I necessarily do that every single year. I typically on my evergreens do an early spring feed and then sometimes I'll hit a second feed about the first part of June or middle part of June and that seems to do really well and I use several different things for this so like for boxwoods and arborvitas you would use plant tone um, for other evergreens we use holly tone here but you could also use tree tone as well. The second group is deciduous trees and shrubs so those things that lose their leaves in the fall and this is an interesting one because you do your fall application of fertilizer when you would least likely be thinking about doing it. You do it right after the leaves have fallen, but the ground isn't frozen yet. So this plant essentially looks dormant. There's nothing going on, yet you're out there putting your fertilizer down, but it's good for a couple reasons. So there's three main ingredients in fertilizer, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Nitrogen is pretty much unnecessary that time of year because that element or that um, nutrient is what promotes leafy growth and green color, which the plant obviously doesn't need that time of year. And then your phosphorus is what produces roots. And those roots are still working away underneath that soil. Even though the plant looks like it's asleep, the roots are still going for it. So if it has something to feed on um, that can help bulk up that root system, you're even better off. Uh, and then you have potassium. Potassium encourages strong stems, strong plants. It helps the plant withstand extreme cold and heat. It also um, gives your plant the ability to take up other nutrients. So it's a really important nutrient. And so your trees and shrubs will still be utilizing the phosphorus and potassium throughout the winter months. Now I do have to say for big, mature, established trees, I usually don't fertilize those. I usually only uh, fertilize the ones that are brand new planted, maybe for the first few seasons, and then of course all of my shrubs. The third category is roses, and I wanted to make this its own kind of group because they are such a popular plant and you do treat them a little bit different than you would your other shrubs. So we just talked about other deciduous shrubs and how you would do a fall application of fertilizer. You don't on roses. So you wanna skip fertilizing in the fall at all. The two times that we fertilize roses and we use rose tone for that is uh, early in the spring and then once again after its first bloom cycle so that you can encourage repeat blooming. The fourth group is perennials and this one is a little bit interesting. So you also want to only give a half strength fertilizer in early fall. Now I typically like some years I'll do a fall application and some years I don't. The most important for perennials, I think, is early spring and then again about a couple months later. So typically I'll do sometime in March and then usually after I cut back my first flush of blooms, like for salvia for instance, it comes out and blooms beautifully. And then about the first week of June or so, you come in and cut it back so that it can uh, recharge for its second bloom. And that's about the time I'll go in and give another dose of fertilizer. So in early fall, you can go ahead and give a half strength if you 
you want to. Um, and some years I do, some years I don't. If you are dividing or transplanting anything, any kind of perennial this time of year, which it's a great time to do it, you wanna use the Biotone fertilizer, the starter fertilizer, because you wanna treat every division as a brand new plant. And you want that plant to create a strong root system, which the Biotone will help it do. But any perennial that's actively growing in the fall, like your mums, your asters, your anemones, you can go ahead and give them a full application feed early in the fall. Fifth group is annuals. This one's really easy. I'm hoping that you guys have your annuals on a weekly fertilizing schedule throughout the summer. You can relax on it a little bit in the fall because you're just not watering as often because the temperatures are cooler. Plants aren't utilizing quite as much nutrients. Usually, like the rule of thumb is every third watering you give fertilizer, which in the summertime, that would mean I was would be giving water every three days and that's just not reality for me. So I just keep them on a once a week schedule. But once you get into fall, if you're doing every, you know, every third watering, maybe you're giving it fertilizer every 10 to 14 days rather than once a week. The most important thing is just to keep fertilizing because those plants in containers don't have a nutrient reservoir to draw from. They only have what you give them and they'll do the best, they'll perform the longest if they're healthy and still getting food. The sixth group of plants are bulbs. And I know a lot of us are getting really excited to get our bulbs in the ground. So I'm talking like tulips, daffodils, hyacinths, crocus, things like that. I use bulb tone when I plant. So I use an auger typically. I dig my holes with the auger and then I'll put about a teaspoon. I think that's what the bag recommends is a teaspoon at the bottom of each hole. And typically I'll have like a ton of holes and I'll just get a big handful and and just kind of sprinkle it around and try to get you know a teaspoon ish in each one of the holes and that will help uh, each bulb create a really strong root system and then in consecutive years you'll be fertilizing in the spring after they're done blooming rather than in the fall um, so just keep that in mind so it's fall when you plant and then consecutive years it's in the spring after they're done blooming and the last category is grass and we get a lot of questions about what we do with our grass like what kind of schedule we put it on we have done a video about it before but in fall we do two applications so we do a regular lawn food application in September usually around Labor Day sometime, and that just helps it come out of its summer slump. You know, we have a lot of heat here, it's really dry, and it just helps green it back up and make it look a little bit more lush going into fall. And then sometime in October, typically like mid-October to late October, we'll do a winterizer. Um, so it's a specific winterizer fertilizer um, that helps, it's got potash in it that helps it recover from the drought from summer and then gets it ready to go for spring so that it greens up really fast for you. So that's it, you guys. That's my take on fall fertilizing, and that's the schedule we try to keep our garden on not that we're perfect every year you know life gets busy sometimes you forget or maybe like you're in the middle of a move or you had a baby or whatever you know life happens I just wanted to kind of bring it to the front of your mind because fall seems to be the time when we're wanting to shut everything down outside you know we're kind of wanting to button everything up and have a little rest and um, start planning for the next year but it's just so important to keep things fed and keep things happy because then the next year you'll just have such better luck outside in your garden so Anyway, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next one. Bye.